takes you to the wall of reds, and you pick the one that you want. And so she takes it, and she says, you're very good, Joyce. And she pulls out all the little colors, the, 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 the dyes, and she takes them out, and she opens up the package, and she begins to mix with water. And she begins to stir it, and the water now turns blue red. And she says, watch now, watch out. And she takes a piece of unbleached cotton muslin on a stick, on a ball, and she brings it over. She has to hover over this little hole, if you're watching here, and she, and she says, watch now, the process, and she puts it in, right? She's putting that white cloth, cotton, into the water, right? And something's happening to the cloth, right? This isn't so mysterious, right? And when she pulls it out, ready? That white cloth is now completely saturated with all the little red dyes, completely, right? That red, really beautiful red color. And she says, voila, baptizer. So I say that to you because when I learned that and I thought about that, that's actually the word that would be used even today in the Greek language for that process, which is really, really fascinating to me. And I think, why did God pick that word to put in the Bible? Why did God use that word as the process for baptism? And so the idea is, and we talked about this, we talked about it with Robert here today, that he wasn't going to turn red. But the idea is, is that as we go under the waters of baptism, and there's just a little bit of water in our head, or we go fully in, here's the idea, and it's kind of in my little chart. The idea is baptism means to be immersed, to be saturated, to be covered completely, to identify with Baptism itself can't change us inwardly, spiritually, but it's a symbol and it's a picture of the inward change that God is going on in us, right? So that's my understanding of, of um, one way for us to help understand what baptism is and what it means and what it means. Okay. So I want to come back now, and the last thing I'll do here before the baptism is I want to tell you a story that would um, come from. One thing that happens in the uh, in, in his family history, starting all the way back in Africa. So this is a picture, if you will, of uh, what I feel is a parental, a universal parental longing to know that you want to give this gift to God. So this is what happened. In that culture, it was the father's responsibility to name the child. Probably we could go home. And the father didn't tell anybody the name, not his wife, 
circle around. You can come up onto these steps. It's okay. Um, you can take pictures. We're going to keep them in color. I wish I could take it. Oh, no. Her dad is full. So Lillian's going to go first, and then we're going to do something pretty special up here with Robert. That's going to be something a little bit different. <laughs> so this is, comes right out of our uh, liturgy and our hymnal. And it says, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church, incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, into the new birth, the water, and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Question to the parents and godparents. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you believe in God and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms we present in the Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in you with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Mom. And will you nurture this precious little girl in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided one day to accept for herself the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ and to profess her faith openly and to lead her. In our tradition, we don't give uh, babies or infants. She's not really a baby anymore. She sees water. Is that what she's saying? Yeah. Get me excited. She likes it. We don't give her a new name, but we want to say her name. So let us say her name. Her name is Lillian. 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 Rose. Rose right? So, Lillian Rose. As a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is my privilege and honor and responsibility that I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you now and forever. Everybody said, amen. 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 What you're saying by amen is a Hebrew word that means yes, we're in agreement, and we bless her. So, God bless you, little one. All right. Okay. We're going to do something else in the room. Okay. Robert, this is um, um, a new thing for us. We didn't do this exactly, so we talked with Robert about that. Robert read a book with his mother. They studied through a book on baptism. It was called God Should I Be Baptized? And in that book, um, Robert uh, was learning the meaning of baptism. So Robert was, was studying about baptism and he has means of baptism. And so we talked about different ways of maybe him going to find water and going all the way under the water. And so we decided we're going to do something like in between. So we're going to have him just a minute, and his godparents are going to participate in, in the actual baptism. 
So Robert, I want to ask you questions now. Right? We talked about, in the book, it talks about the meanings of baptism having to do with an inward cleansing and very deeply meaning that Robert might, Paul might not understand in terms of the identification of Jesus' death and resurrection, which is part of it, and then outwardly knowing that we're part of God's family and knowing that Jesus is always with us in this life and forever and ever and ever and ever. So Robert, I ask you this question now in front of God and everybody. Do you wish to be baptized in the Christian faith? Robert, do you believe in God? I do. Robert, do you believe in Jesus? I do. Robert, who is Jesus? Santa. You got that one really, really good. And in your understanding of baptism, can you say just a little bit about what baptism means to you? We're going to have uh, mom and uh, dad come up, or mom and, and brothers can come up, and we can be in this room, right? And um, godparents are going to be here. So why don't you think about how you want to get set up, and then we'll come around you. Can you think about this? So... I baptize you now. 